Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and the state of Unreal just wrapped up at GDC 2024. It's a look at all the things that are happening at Epic Games, and I'm going to focus on the game development topics that were discussed there, and we're going to try and do it in under 10 minutes. Now, uh, the one thing you're going to notice right away at the state of Unreal, no Tim Sweeney. That's because he's actually currently in Australia uh, in the legal battles between the Apple App Store and Google Play Store. Uh, so, yeah, he wasn't there. Now, the truth of the matter is, Tim's generally a pretty awkward presenter, so uh, I think he's probably happy not to be there. Now, the one of the first things they discussed was that uh, Unreal Engine was recently used to create the entirety of a film that just won an Oscar. Now, ironically enough, this film was created by Weta Effects. Remember Weta, that Weta Digital was recently purchased and then got rid of by uh, Unity? Well, yeah, the, uh, the folks at Weta Effects used Unreal Engine to create a film that just won an Oscar. So cool n news there. Now, there was also a bit of uh, film footage of a new game that was just announced. It's Marvel's 1943 The Rise of Hydra. Now, I'm not going to talk about game announcements too much in this particular recap because, I'm, again, I'm mostly focused on the game development side of things. But there were some interesting announcements there. They showed the Nanite Adaptive uh, Dynamic Tessellation Level of Detail System in action there. It's a memory-efficient way that can be changed at runtime. You can layer textures and geometries automatically and dynamically creates new Nanite meshes. Kind of an interesting LOD system. They also showed the new heterogeneous volumes. Uh, this is a way of doing volume volumetric uh, smoke and cloud and fog effects. Uh, OpenVDB was actually added in support in 5.3 in experimental format, and it appears that Marvel 1943 is using those volumetric effects. The cool thing is it allows you to do things like create cl um, clouds of smoke that actually self-shadow and, and absorb light and so on. Uh, so it's going to be an interesting approach there. Uh, they used machine learning for their uh, setup uh, created in Houdini. They created the uh, machine learning model that can then be run in real time. They used metahuman models and ultra-high detail models for this. Uh, so you see them, they demonstrated on the bridge here. They took a mask off. They showed the actors in real time. You can see the real high level of detail that they worked with there. So that was the first demonstration they did. Marvel 1943. Interesting looking game. Coming in uh, 2025, I believe it was. And then we get into the Unreal Engine 5.4 specific side of things. Uh, and there were uh, an announcement of the various different improvements that happened in Unreal Engine itself. Uh, we had things like Nanite uh, Tessellation and the uh, heterogeneous volume volumetric effects that we just saw with the Marvel game. Uh, global fog volumes, faster lumen and ray tracing, uh, and they took the city sample that they released, uh, was that last GDC or the year before, the Matrix one? Uh, they basically said that you've got the uh, render times down by 50% and GPU time down by 25%, just from optimizations they've done in Unreal Engine 5.4. Now, another big area that they talked about was there's new animation tools. Uh, so there is now a uh, motion matching is considered production ready, uh, and then there is new debugging tools, such as the rewind debugger for animation, which is, was battle tested in chapter 5 of Fortnite. Uh, there's also, and this is really cool, it should be available for download right now, uh, all of the samples that you saw from those animations, all the runs and uh, various different animations there, there's a total of 500 AAA uh, quality animations being released as um, an animation library today. And on top of that, it is fully compatible with the MetaHuman rig. Um, so definitely some nice developments in that regard. And plus there's a new modular control rigs for animation, new deformers like squash and stretch and so on. So lots of improvements in 5.4 around animation. I'm going to probably do a specific video about Unreal Engine 5.4 at some point in the near future. Uh, they also talked about uh, dev iterations. This is one of those things that people always complain about when it comes to Unreal Engine is the build times. Uh, and they've got Unreal Engine Build Accelerator, which I think is a distributed compilation system. Uh, and it compiles Unreal Engine two to three times faster on their end. On top of that, they've also said that um, cooking compiles fewer shaders and speeds up build, something that we all like. Waiting for Unreal Engine to compile shaders is definitely a maddening thing. Next, they moved on to the UE audio side of things. So MetaSounds continues to improve. There is a new audio profiling tool called Audio Insights. Uh, they moved from audio then to talk about procedural content generation. This was the big announcement last year where you could, you know, well, procedurally create your levels and content and so on. A few new updates in that regard. Uh, they added a runtime hierarchical generation, several other new features, uh, and Procedural content generation is actually being used in LEGO Fortnite. Uh, the procedural content generation biome creation tool was released. The PCG framework is now considered in beta. So the way things work in the UE ecosystem is things go experimental, uh, and then I think alpha, beta, and then release. So uh, it's going to be out soon. They think it should be production ready, so full release uh, within a year. Uh, and then 
Uh, that was the end of the Unreal Engine features update. Uh, preview 1 is available right now. So if you want to go ahead and check out Unreal Engine 5.4 preview, uh, it's out there uh, and the full release should be coming in about a month. So you can go and download Unreal Engine uh, 5.4 preview right now, which was kind of cool. Then they recapped about Unreal Engine and its use in films and uh, TV shows. Now this is actually pretty important because this is that uh, demographic. They just changed their pricing so that these people have to pay some money to use it. Well, they just announced that um, it's being used in over 800 films and TV shows. Uh, next up, they showed another game that was created using Unreal Engine. It's a Doom open world game. I think this was the world uh, reveal of it. Um, they talked about it was created. It used Houdini, used the Fluid Ninja plugins, it used, used Lumen for lighting and so on. Uh, and what you're seeing in front of you is taken from the actual trailer. So I believe this was an open world survival style game. Another one that they showcased, there was a few games that they actually showcased at this point in time. Again, I'm not focusing that much on the game trailer stuff, uh, but they also covered uh, Zynga's Star Wars Hunter. 4v4 multiplayer battle game and then uh, from a Korean MMO RPG studio uh, Chrono Studio they showed Chrono Odyssey uh, an action MMO uh, this used world partition for creating its large worlds obviously created with Unreal Engine as well uh, then we moved on to the Unreal Engine store so Steve Allison the, the manager of the Unreal Engine store spoke about it um, if you use your own in-app purchases you keep 100% of the revenue that's not a new announcement but it's nice all the same uh, and then they have the epic first run and new on epic programs the first run is basically if your first six months of your game was uh, revealed on epic at, like right away or when you port a, a, a back catalog game over to unreal engine you keep 100 percent of revenue on the epic game store uh, for the first six months. So that's definitely a nice one there. A little bit of a talk again about the lawsuits that are going on in Australia right now, but there has definitely been some development there as they announced that the Epic Game Store on mobile on iOS and Android will be out before the year's end. So Fortnite is coming back to mobile. will work across, so the stores will work across Android, iOS, PC, and Mac. And it's going to have the same generous revenue split that you've seen uh, in Epic Game Store and so on. So, um, if you are an Unreal Engine developer looking to publish on mobile, uh, the Epic Game Store is coming soon. You, actually, you don't even need to just be Unreal Engine. You can be any kind of game development. But they're going to have an app store on both Android and iOS before the end of the year. Of course, the lofts, <laughs> who knows what can happen legally in between then and now. So then after that, they moved on to the UEFN, so the Unreal Engine for Fortnite. Uh, announcements. They said that uh, to date, $320 million was paid out to UEFN developers. You can now create top-down and side-scrolling games. There is a new FPS camera coming later this year. Fall Guy assets and animations are being added to Fortnite in May. And starting today, the rocket racing template has been added. Uh, then some announcements about Verse. This is going to impact Unreal Engine, um, main Unreal Engine, as well as UEFN. I'm not sure I fully understood what they were talking about here, uh, but there's a new scene graph system on Verse. This almost looks like a, a, it does, Verse can do the same thing that Blueprints did, you know, with the incorporation of data and other uh, information into it. And then the other key part is they did confirm that Verse will in fact be coming to full-blown Unreal Engine as well. So there's this new scene graph system for Verse and Verse will be added to Unreal if you've been wondering about that all along. Uh, it'll be available to all creators on UEFN, so the, the new event scene, scene, scene graph system for Verse is going to be available this summer. Uh, and then they talked about Lego Fortnite physics and construction features being added to Unreal Engine for Fortnite as well. A new discovery system for uh, UEFN system that's basically a portal and uh, social area for creators to be able to collaborate with their fans for finding games to play and that kind of stuff um, is being uh, updated as well. And then by the end of 2025, uh, Epic Games themselves will be creating the next season of Battle Royale entirely using Verse and UEFN. So they're not going to be created in Unreal specifically. They're actually created in that UEFN subset. It's this way of basically Epic Games' is dogfooding to show that their own games, Battle Royale Fortnite, is created fully using UEFN. They announced that you can now use metahumans inside of UEFN, and even cooler, Marvelous Creation, the tool for creating clothing, you're going to be able to get one year of it free. I don't know if that's going to be just for UEFN or all UE developers, but a cool announcement nonetheless. And then finally, they made some announcements about new LEGO stuff. There's 
four new templates out there. There's a bunch of Lego stuff you can use. Uh, you gotta be 18 plus to create content. Your content needs to be for people 10 and older. But yeah, that's it. The state of Unreal Engine in under 10 minutes. What do you think? Let me know in the comments down below and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.